Hey, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to learn about Git flow branch workflow. My name is Sushant Sutish and I'm your trainer for this AZ400 Microsoft certified Azure DevOps engineer certification course. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. The purpose of writing code is to ship enhancements to your software. A branching model that introduces too much process overhead does not help to increase the speed with which you can get changes out to customers. It is therefore important to come up with a branching model that gives you enough padding to not ship poor quality changes but at the same time not introduce too many processes to slow you down. The internet is full of branching strategies for Git. While there is no right or wrong, a perfect branching strategy is one that works for your team. Git flow is ideally suited for projects that have scheduled release cycle. This workflow doesn't add any new concepts or commands beyond what's required for a feature branch workflow. Instead, it assigns very specific role to different branches and define how and when they should interact. So how can you get started? Git flow is really just an abstract idea of a Git workflow. This means it dictates what kind of branches to set up and how to merge them together. The Git flow toolset is an actual command line tool that has an installation process. The installation process for Git flow is straightforward. Packages for Git flow are available on multiple operating systems as well. On OS X systems, you can execute brew install Git flow. And on Windows systems, you will need to download and install Gitflow. After installing Gitflow, you can use it on your project by executing Gitflow in it. Let's look into feature branches. Each new feature should reside in its own branch, which can be pushed to the central repository for backup and collaboration. But instead of branching off of master, feature branches use develop as their parent branch. When a feature is complete, it gets merged back into develop and features should never interact directly with master. Note that the feature branches combined with the develop branch is for all instance and purposes, the feature branch workflow, but the git flow workflow doesn't stop there. And the feature branches are generally created off to the latest develop branch. Let's look into release branches. Once develop has acquired enough features for a release, you fork a release branch off of develop. Creating this branch starts the next release cycle. So no new features can be added after this point. Only bug fixes, documentation and other release oriented tasks should go in this branch. Once it's ready to ship, the release branch gets merged into master and tagged with a version number. In addition, it should be merged back into develop, which may have progressed since the release was initiated. Using dedicated branch to prepare releases makes it possible for one team to polish the current release, while another team continuously working on features for the next release. It also creates well-defined phases for development. Let's look into what is forking workflow. Forking workflow is fundamentally different than other popular Git workflows. Instead of using a single server-side repository to act as the central code base, it gives every developer their own server-side repository. The main advantage of the forking workflow is that contributions can be integrated without the need for everybody to push to a single central repository. As in the other Git workflows, the forking workflow begins with an official public repository stored on a server. But when a new developer wants to start working on the project, they do not directly clone the official repository. Instead, they fork the official repository to create a copy of it on the server. And when you are ready to publish a local commit, they'll publish the commit to their own public repository, not the official one. So let's look into how is forking different from cloning. It's important to note that fork repositories and forking are not special operations. Fork repositories are created using the standard git clone command. 
and forked repositories are generally server-side clones and usually managed and hosted by a Git service provider such as Azure Repos. And there is no unique Git command to create forked repositories. A clone operation is essentially a copy of a repository and its history. Now let's look into how can you collaborate with pull requests in Azure Repos. Pull request lets you tell others about changes you have pushed to Git repository. Once a pull request is sent, interested parties can review the set of changes, discuss potential modification, and even push follow-up commits if necessary. Pull requests are commonly used by teams and organizations collaborating using shared repository model, where everyone shares a single repository and topic branches are used to develop features and isolate changes. Many open source projects on GitHub use pull requests to manage changes from contributors and they are useful in providing a way to notify project maintainers about changes one has made and in initiating code review and general discussion about a set of changes before being merged into the main branch. Pull requests combine the review and merge of your code into a single collaborative process. The code review done in a pull request isn't just to find obvious bugs. That's what your tests are for. A good code review catches less obvious problems and could lead to the costly issues later. And code reviews help protect your team from bad mergers and broken build that sap your team's productivity. That concludes this episode. In the next episode, we're going to learn about why care about Git hooks. So I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.